Hello everyone, my name is Relax and Panic and this is another reaction to the time I got reincarnated as a slime. It is episode 21 and we are still with the kids and you know what to do as always. If you want to see the reaction itself, just go down into my descriptions, follow the links, replace the parentheses dot parts with real dots and enjoy. Once you've done, feel free to come back here and hear my thoughts about this episode. So see you soon. For those that came back, welcome back. Now, um, what a good little episode. I mean, uh, there was quite a bit in it and um, we got some problems we got informed about and we got the solution in the same episode. So they're really increasing the pace now. They are really hurrying up to find solutions. And um, I think some of you mentioned it in the last episodes in the comments that um, they are pacing up a little bit and you can feel that. That's true. Um, so let's see. First off, we want to introduce ourselves to the children and uh, want to earn their trust. I am not sure about the way he does it, however. Um, I mean, intimidating children with a huge wolf is possibly not the best way. Sure, for those kids it might be working because uh, they are used to strange stuff. But let's just say you do anything like that in a class here. You know, you bring like like a huge dog with and he's growling at the kids if they are not behaving. I mean, that's clearly not how you should do it. But okay, yeah, that's Rimuru. He's doing stuff differently. Um, then he started with a test, which no one likes, sure. Um, but it was a, a kind of a combat test. So um, they are meant to hit him, to, to be able to beat him in a fight. And they are... Um, pretty sure about their powers. They are aware that they are more powerful than the most, um, except for Shizu, uh, as example. So they go in with the idea of that they can do it. It's, however, a very cool way of showing us what these kids are capable of, what their powers are. And um, I, I wrote them down a little bit. So uh, uh, Kenya has. Um, some kind of firepower, but not very well defined yet. He, you know, he just burns it out. He just throws fire. Um, and as Rimuru mentioned, it is not really strong yet, not compared to the abilities he has in himself. So if he would train that, and I think that goes for most of the kids, um, they would become way more efficient. They would become way stronger than they are by now. Um, but then they they never did that so they said they never trained they never studied at all because all the other teachers and the people are like you're gonna die soon so it doesn't matter if you're training because a dead one does need it so just spend your time as you wish um that's that sounds very cynical and very negative um and it is but I can see the point of view of those people. However, telling this to kids and uh, making them feel that is possibly not the best idea. So instead of spending time with them would be the better option. And that is what Rimuru is doing right now. Um, at least he's starting. So um, we had Kenya with a fire. We had Chloe, um, who likes picture books. And I'm, I think he can, Rimuru can get her very easily to trust him. She already started, as she said, from the beginning. She's the youngest one, as far as I can see it. She's very open. She's very, um, uh, she wants to have friends, I guess. It feels like that. And um, liking picture books, I mean, he can print them. We've seen it in the last episode. He can throw them out if he wants to. So he could get her. And yes, I agree with him. She reminds uh, uh, him and me of someone. And I say she reminds us of Shizu. Um, at least, you know, the, the outer appearance and everything is very much like her. But we will see. Um, so she has water powers. She uses water magic. Um, I like that idea of the water prison and the blades that are inside. I mean, that's a really a mean trap. No question there. If you are not able to um, have anything that, that defends you against water or gives you the ability to break out there very fast, you will be sliced into pieces. And that from this little girl is, yeah, surprising. Um, the remove got out by magic manipulation. Cool. Um, 
but you can see there that not everyone is so untrained as Kenya is. So she has some abilities already and I guess she can learn a lot, especially when it's about water magic. Um, that is what Remuru started with, so he should have some um, things to show her there. Uh, by the way, I asked myself if he could name the kids again. Just saying. Um, oh yeah, the, we had a special um, moment with Chloe because she cried after she lost. Um, when he touched her on the forehead. So he was like um, holding her, patting her a bit on the on the head. And I'm not sure if she really cried because she lost. It might very well be but that's just a guess, that she cried because he was touching her, in the meaning of that he was getting close to her. Seeing that those kids have these powers and they are kind of uncontrolled and people are afraid of them, it might very well be that there were not many others, apart from the other kids, that were giving her a hug or comforting her ever. So it might be that that is something in this moment she was crying about, she gets comforted by him. Um... Gail uses magic bullets. I'm not sure about what that ability is clearly, but, you know, they just showed it. Um, Ryoto has some berserker, some body enhancement strength abilities, which is cool, but the, the loss of temper, the loss of control is a problem, clearly. So, question is, if you could refine it, define it to just, I don't know, enhance you, but not lose control. Um... In the end, he was kind of, uh, Rimuru was kind of playing with them because he was more powerful, more experienced. And uh, most of those fights he won by dodging. Um, and Alice is a golem master. So, uh, that's a bit surprising. So she can manipulate kind of telekinesis, I guess, um, things from afar. Because it, it looked like she had them on wires, you know, like a puppet master, really. So could she do it with swords instead? So multiple swords who just fly by? Or do it have to be um, lifelike creatures? So um, kind of humanoid creatures like those puppets were. I guess we will learn. Um, so Remo won those fights quite easily, most of them. Um, but he learned that the power that is within the kids, which is a problem, too much power, um, is not reduced by that at all. I'm not sure if he can somehow sense it. I mean, we've seen some characters can do it, uh, like like um, Milim, who's able to see the power level, um, but it does not change much here. So uh, the question is what else to do, and he got the idea of using spirits um, like Shizu had. She had the spirit of Ifrit within her, which gave her the ability to control these powers, but had the negative effect that um, when you cannot control Ifrit anymore, he goes haywire. So get some powerful spirits who help the kids to control their powers, their their energies. But if possible, are not so negative. So some nature spirits maybe um, might be an option. So that's why he's searching for the Queen of Spirits, um, where Trainee couldn't help. And in the end of the episode, just by coincidence, we had a character being able to tell him where to go. So that's what I said about fast-paced. We have um, an idea for a solution, we have a problem, and we have the solution for the problem all within one episode. Very, very fast-paced. Normally you would need more time, you would guess. And uh, we skipped a month just by saying, I spent one month there teaching the kids. So there's a fast pace going on. Um, the Sky Dragon out of nowhere, I don't get that, why? Um, and then he rescued, just by coincidence, the, this merchant, who then joins him without much ado, without much problems, brings in, as it seems, a high-quality spy network or information network. So that is all very, you know, it's like it is falling into place a bit too easy. Um, I guess in the in the manga in the uh, in the novel, this is possibly something um, over a complete arc. Meeting those characters, earning the trust. A sky dragon is possibly not coming out of nowhere. It is possibly a reason why the, the sky dragon is attacking there, or at least it is shown over a longer time. Because here the fight was like sky dragon, lightning, absorbed lightning, lightning again, 
absorbed lightning and dragon gone. It was a fight of, I don't know, 30 seconds. So that's a bit too fast. I uh, see the reasons for fast pacing. You want to go um, with the story to a specific point where you want to focus more on, but you don't want to skip some important parts of the original. So you bring them still in, but very, very fast paced and chopped down. Um, as I say, it's, it's a bit sad that this, um, there are possibly a lot of interesting scenes and characters who get not enough spotlight. But if um, they chose to just show specific arcs of the original, that's what they have to do. Um, so Mjolnir is now uh, with us. I'm not sure about him. He has a strange vibe, but it might be that it is just the way he is moving and smiling, smirking. Um, it would be a bit bad if he would be some kind of a traitor character later on, because... Um, there was no really, not really for me as a viewer, an option to make sure how this character is really behaving. Because that was so fast, inviting them to dinner and then just joining in. Um, it could be everything. He could be trustworthy, he could be not. I mean, he's a merchant, so possibly it's a matter of price. We will see. Um, although I guess there are not many people who can give him as much mm, minerals, Products, gold, whatever, as Rimuru can. Um, and last but not least, we are now moving to the Republic of Ulgrasia, uh, where the Dwell of Spirits is. So, this is far in the south, from what I've seen, that I think it is the longest journey they made yet, because from what I've seen on the world map, it is even farther away than this kingdom is by now. So, um, I kind of hope that we will have a little bit of spirit adventures, but I kind of guess we will not, because they are speeding it up. Um, to see this queen of spirits, and I'm uh, looking forward to what she is like. Uh, Trainee said that they, the, the dryads of the forest of Yura, worked for the old queen of spirits in the past, until this one died, um, and they lost contact to the new one. They don't know who it is. So uh, that's kind of interesting because it means that um, droids are kind of nature spirits, that's true. Um, so what is this Queen of Spirits? What kind of spirits? I mean, if it was one as well. So is it more nature based? Is it elemental based? Is it um, like everything? You know, life spirits, magic spirits, you can do everything. Um, not sure about that. We will see. Um, I'm looking out for it. And... Um, yeah, as I said, it was an episode which brought us a little bit along, which introduced the kids and their abilities a bit more, and made sure that they join in with Rimuru, um, just by showing the mask in the end. You know, all his ideas of doing it did only work out so partially, because he was merely intimidating them and showing them that he's stronger. That is not really something that gives you trust. But when he took out the mask of Shizu, a person who they trusted, who they loved in the past, uh, that's what got them on board. Although um, I'm waiting for the moment when he kind of has to tell them that she's gone. Because that is something he didn't mention. He made it look a bit like she and she. he said, she entrusted this to me. So he made it sound a little bit like she gave it to him. Um, not mentioning the fact that she is dead. So... There's a difference, and we will see if this will come um, to terms in the next episodes. That's it from me this time. Um, as I said, an episode bringing in characters this time, and very fast-paced. I will see you next time. Until then, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. My name is Relax and Panic. Goodbye, and out.